benefits of being a SEMPTE member, I think, is this new personal development initiative that SEMPTE's come up with. And uh, if you're not a SEMPTE <coughs> member, there are many other reasons to become a SEMPTE member. Welcome, everyone. I'm Carl Kuhn. I'm the section chair for the DC section here. And tonight, we have a very special event, archiving and preservation of videotape assets. And our speaker is Bland MacArthur with SAMA System. So the problems, as we all know, videotape deteriorates over time. But there's also another problem that's much more of like a cliff effect, and that's format obsolescence. If you've got video content on a tape format and there's no more tape players, that content is worthless to you. You took an experienced video person and set them down in front of a tape machine and a bunch of monitoring gear, um, probably some tech monitors and some picture monitors, and um, and you watch for anomalies as you do the migration to make sure that the files that you're creating are good, accurate copies of what you had on tape. And of course, if you have a dirty tape and you've got dropouts and other kinds of problems, you probably want to fix those because you don't want to embed those tape imperfections into your digital files. So you put the deck in remote and you can control it from the, from the GUI screen. And basically, it will tell you the, the type time code. You've got uh, bar, code, bar level meters for your video and audio. Uh, there's a start button right there. You have to make sure that the tape is in good enough shape to be migrated. Notice the first hit, notice you smelled it. If the tape has like, got mold and mildew, you don't want to put it into a tape deck. It's not a good idea. So the operator is prompted through a series of visual steps just to make sure that the case isn't cracked, that the tape pack looks OK. And it's the right tape in the right box. If there's an existing barcode, you scan it, or you can type in the, the ID from your database if you've got one. It prints out a human barcode, a simply human, that is going to be put on the tape. She scans that and then gives her another equivalent human to put on the box. It takes about 45 seconds, 30 to 45 seconds per tape. Now the tape is ready for automated migration. So that one's done, she puts it away, grabs the next tape, and it's going to check to see uh, have those tapes been properly prepped? Have they already been migrated? Have they been cleaned? So it does some, some checking because now we're adding information about this tape migration into the client database. The first thing that we do is going to clean the tape. Right now, it's the basically the old-fashioned way. you got to play the tape to read the tape. But there are sophisticated ways with uh, laser technologies yeah. and other things to read basically the entire RF signature on that tape and then convert that back into a signal. As storage gets cheaper and bandwidth gets cheaper and all these things, and, and, uh, but right now you can cut your storage cost by 60 to 70 percent without putting any artifacts at all into your content by using JPEG 2000. So this is our audiovisual preservation room. And uh, actually, I had Eric Winokur. I hired him to help me put together this. Um, what it's it's not even a preservation duplication rack. It's really just a a rack so that we can look at some of our content. One of our biggest problems is not even knowing what's on the tape. Mm -hmm. So you know, you get something that says important. Uh, that isn't going to help you actually make a decision about what might be on it. This portion on is the beta uh, test part. This is our um, tape cleaning machine. You have your tape, and we put it in here, and you can you can watch this thing uh, run. And I know that in, um, people are interested in the tape machine. Let's see, do it. Basically, all it does is it takes the tape out and it and it cleans it front and back. Among other things, it probably compresses um, any oxide that may have sort of fluffed up or uh, and. Why it may have fluffed up is a question, but if you look, talk to um, chemists about this, one of the things that they're thinking is that maybe it's shifting from a one iron oxide uh, metal formation to slightly another one. It may have expanded a little bit. We clean them usually um, at, at least three times and up to five times, and we look to see how dirty the tape is. And that's one thing that will help, sometimes helps us predict. Um, what kind of damage there might be. And what that's going to do is it's going to come up with some, uh, basically down here, some uh, the template that you want to have to migrate your materials. This is configured to rewind the source tape before it starts to migrate. 